Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of the sphenoid bone. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Let's start with some general information about the bone. The sphenoid bone, also known as the wasp bone, is located in the middle and towards the front of the skull, in front of the occipital bone and behind the frontal bone. It is said to be butterfly shaped. This is the superior view of the base of skull. And as you can see the bone shaded in the yellow is the sphenoid bone. Blue shaded bone is the frontal bone. And the orange shaded bone is the occipital bone. As you can see the sphenoid bone is located in the middle and towards the front of the skull, behind the frontal bone and in front of the occipital bone. This is the anterior view of the sphenoid bone. And as you can see it resembles a butterfly shape. So to understand it better, we will divide this bone into four parts that are the body, greater wings, lesser wings and the pterygoid processes. Let's have a look. This blue shaded part is the body of this bone. Red shaded part is the greater wing. This green part is the lesser wing. And lastly, the yellow part is the pterygoid process. We will discuss each of these parts separately and see what all anatomical features they possess. Starting with the body of the sphenoid bone. The body lies at the center of the sphenoid bone and is completely cuboidal in shape. The superior surface of the body has a depression called the cella turcica. This cella turcica has three parts. The hypophyseal fossa, tuberculum celli and the dorsum celli. The deepest part of the cella turcica where the pituitary gland is located is called as the hypophyseal fossa. Anterior wall of the cella turcica is formed by the tuberculum celli. Whereas the posterior wall of the cella turcica is formed by the dorsum celli. The cella turcica is surrounded by the anterior and posterior clinoid processes. The anterior clinoid processes arise from the lesser wings while the posterior clinoid processes are the superolateral projections of the dorsum celli. They serve as an attachment point for the tentorium cerebelli, a membranous sheet that divides the brain. Difficult to imagine this, right? Let's have a look at these parts. So this is the superior view of the bone. This deep part is the hypophyseal fossa, where the pituitary gland is situated. This is the tuberculum celli, which forms the anterior wall of the cella turcica. This is the dorsum celli, which forms the posterior wall of the cella turcica. So these are the three parts of the cella turcica. This is how the pituitary gland is situated in the cella turcica. This is the lesser wing. And as we discussed earlier that from the lesser wings, the anterior clinoid processes arise. So these are the anterior clinoid processes. The superolateral projections of the dorsum celli are these posterior clinoid processes. Let's continue with the rest of the features present on the body of the sphenoid bone and then we will look at them. The carotid groove for the internal carotid artery passes on each lateral surface of the body of the sphenoid bone. On the anterior surface of the body, the sphenoidal crest is present. The crest continues down and forms the sphenoidal rostrum. The openings of the sphenoidal sinus are seen on the sides of the crest. And this sphenoidal sinus is divided by the septum of sphenoidal sinuses. Let's have a look. Again, we see the superior view of the bone. This marked area in the black is the carotid groove for the internal carotid artery. This is the anterior view of the bone. This crest which you can see is the sphenoidal crest, which continues down to form this sphenoidal rostrum. These holes are the sphenoidal sinuses, which can be seen on either sides of the crest. With this, we complete the body of the sphenoid bone. Before moving further in the video, I would like you to pause the video and write all these parts on a piece of paper for better learning. Next part of the sphenoid bone is the greater wing. The greater wing has four surfaces, which include the cerebral surface, orbital surface, maxillary surface, and the temporal surface. The cerebral surface has impressions of the cerebral gyri. The orbital surface forms the lateral wall of the orbit. 
the maxillary surface is directed towards the maxilla. The temporal surface forms the medial wall of the temporal fossa. There is the infratemporal crest which separates the infratemporal surface. Let's have a look. So this is the superior and the anterior view of the bone. This marked area is the cerebral surface. This is the sagittal cross section of the bone. And this marked surface is the orbital surface. This is how the orbital surface forms the lateral wall of the orbit. This is the inferior and anterior view of the bone. This marked surface is the maxillary surface which is directed towards the maxilla. This is the posterior lateral view of the bone. This surface which you can see is the temporal surface. The surface below the rectangle is the infratemporal surface. Any guesses what this rectangle can be? Yes, you may have guessed it right to be the infratemporal crest. This was not all for the greater wing. It also has three important foramens, which include foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, and foramen spinosum. Foramen rotundum conducts the maxillary nerve. Ovale conducts the mandibular nerve. And spinosum conducts the middle meningeal artery. Let's have a look. So this is the superior view of the base of skull. This yellow circle has foramen rotundum. Just below it is the foramen ovale, encircled in the pink. And this encircled in the red is the foramen spinosum. With this, we complete the greater wing and move on to the third part, which is the lesser wing. The lesser wing arises from the anterior aspect of the sphenoid body in a superolateral direction. It also forms the lateral border of the optic canal. The optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery pass through this canal. The medial border of the optic canal is formed by the body of the sphenoid bone. There is a slit-like gap between the lesser and the greater wings of the sphenoid called the superior orbital fissure. The posterior borders of the lesser wings are free and carry on their medial ends the anterior clinoid processes. Let's have a look. These areas shaded in the green are the lesser wings and in blue is the body of the sphenoid. This hole encircled in the yellow is the optic canal. And if you look closely, this lesser wing forms the lateral border of this canal, whereas the body forms the medial border. We discussed here that there is a slit-like gap between the lesser and the greater wings. So, this slit-like gap between these two wings is the superior orbital fissure. With this, we complete the third part and move on to the last part of the sphenoid, which is the pterygoid process. The pterygoid processes are directed downwards from the junction of the greater wings and the body of the sphenoid bone. Their base is pierced by the pterygoid canal, which transmits the pterygoid nerve and vessels. Its anterior opening communicates with the pterygopalatine fossa. Each process is made up of medial and lateral plates, between which the pterygoid fossa is located posteriorly. The inferior portion of the pterygoid fossa is continuous with the pterygoid notch. The inferior part of the medial plate forms a hook-like process called the pterygoid hamulus. Let's have a look. So these processes shaded in the yellow are the pterygoid processes. This is the posterior view of the bone. Here, the pterygoid canal is present, which pierces the base of the pterygoid process and transmits the pterygoid nerve and vessels. As we know, there are two plates in each process, which include this medial plate and this lateral plate. Between these two plates, this pterygoid fossa is located posteriorly. We discussed here that the inferior portion of the pterygoid fossa is continuous with the pterygoid notch. So this area outlined in the black depicts the pterygoid notch. Lastly, the inferior part of this medial plate forms this hook-like process called the pterygoid hamulus. Before ending this video, I would like you to write all the features of the sphenoid bone separately so that it gets imprinted in your memory. So that is it for this video guys. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram. Links in the description.